You're also a member of the International Brotherhood of Magicians. Yes, I'm a member. So you must have been going for conventions. What kind of things happen at the convention? So it starts from the church. It's a five-day thing. It starts from the church. After prayers, we'll go. We have exhibitors. You go to the exhibition hall. You, you, you buy what you want to buy. You see what you want to see. You meet people. You meet great magicians. You meet... I was a very young boy when I met David Copperfield. David Copperfield, the foremost magician in America. Mm. He was my dad's friend. I met him at a convention in Las Vegas. You see? So that's, you, it brings magicians all over the world together. So it starts from so the you church. Network, you, you network, you share ideas. You share ideas. And there are exhibitors. Exhibitors. So it's like a five day thing. We have banquets, we have dinner, we have all kinds of things you can imagine at a convention. So at the end of the day, at the end of the, the fifth day, is still a prayer, a Thanksgiving prayer in the church. And everybody departs. And everybody departs. Now, from and that convention, everybody goes back to, yeah, to their location. To the location. I remember a very long time ago at the National Art Center in Lagos. No, my dad used to do cutting, and my mom would be in the box, and the cutter into two. So there was a critic in one of the newspapers then. He just wrote that. Well, why was Professor Pella, why did Professor Pella have to put his wife in the box to call? Why can't he just cut the wife in open view and people could so, so my dad now took up the challenge and my dad I remember my dad had an interview and he did say, Look, I'm an entertainer. I want to entertain people. Mm. I don't want to scare people. So that's why I do that and I yeah, hypnotize yeah, yeah. her before cutting her and no plus. So yes. So my dad now took up the challenge. So he had that show at the National Theatre. And I remember Chief Obafemi Olo was the chairman of the occasion. Uh, Alaji Latif Yakode was there. There were loads of dignitaries. Yeah, yes, yes. And my dad just brought, well, I was saying it for the first time. I was a young boy then. I was still in secondary school. And you put your mom on the table. Yes, on the bed. And he now used this gigantic sewing machine. It was very big, massive like sewing machine. Used for timber. Yeah, for timber, the big one. And it just went, I was in the audience. I was in the audience. My sisters, everybody were there. My, my, brothers, my brother was the stage manager then, so they, my big brothers. So my dad just went, when he put, when the saw just went through, there was blood everywhere. People were running out of the hall. Some people, the hall was half empty. There was blood. Because I was going to ask you. Yes, there, you there, there was blood. blood. Because then, he, because he wanted to entertain people. You, he, he, yes. No, but, you know, that was why he was putting her in the box. That so he didn't want to scare blood. anybody. Yeah, so he just do so a he kind saw of. Her he saw that openly, and people were running out of the hall. And something else happened. Someone did something, and my dad couldn't get mom back together again you know so my dad had to come i knew he was very very confused he was worried he was going back said coming back he was going back said coming back and um, after a while they just covered up blood stains and everything covered up mom's body and he just picked the microphone and just said well ladies and gentlemen um we're really sorry about this but uh, if you have the ticket for this show you can bring it tomorrow Collect the money back. No, not to collect the money back. That will continue tomorrow. Okay. That the show will continue. Yes, tomorrow. And after then, my dad just left. I did not even see my dad. The driver just took him also. And the, the driver took of... us. And the body was there. So his assistants were in the hall. They were all in the hall. You know, after the show, my dad just went. When we got to the house, we saw his car, but he was just in his room. New Year, he had gone to meditate. He was in the room with him. So the next day... And where was your mom's body? He was there. He was on the bed. Box. He was not a box. He, he was on bed. the bed and he was covered. Still blood stain. Body. Yeah, blood stain and everything. He's in the, he was in the papers and um, people talk about this a lot. People of his time, people of his age. Yeah. People were there. Chief of Papa Mahalo was there. Uh, Uncle Wale Awolo, of blessed memory too, was there. You know, so they were all like confused. They were panicking, and they all came to the house, but nobody saw that. Because they had locked it. Yeah, we were all banging, but after the next day, he just came out. He did not even speak to anybody. He just came by straight to the, the theater, theater, and he was backstage, still meditating. Everybody came. The hall was full. 
the hall was full and um, all of came back. Jack and they came back, all of them were all there. So at the end of the day, my dad came on stage and um, he now narrated that he was really sorry about what happened. And I'll tell you what, somebody came on stage. So somebody actually did a video? Yes. Somebody came on stage. Um, a commissioner of police in Lagos State then. I can't remember his name. I was yeah. really young. He came and said, said he has killed his wife. That what happened because he was his friend. And I said, no, don't worry. Said, ah, because we got a report. And this is why we were Police were all there and everything. So when my dad just came on stage and narrated what happened, the, the blood stain, our body was still there, now covered it back. The silver body was there for the whole of two days? Yes, yes. And she was breathing? No, she couldn't be breathing. She was, she was gone. She was dead. Right? Yeah, she, she was gone. His boys were my, the assistants were there. So how did they put her back together? Well, he was um, covered it up, and he was making a statement and this and this and that that he's just an entertainer and um, well, he was doing that act for the first time anyway. You know, like I said, openly, yeah, time. yeah, openly for the first time, cutting into two in a box, he does that. This, oh, and I said something, and this, 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 this went wrong, and all of a sudden, he covered the the, the, body. the body was there. He, he covered it with another sheet, a uh, plain white sheet, and he started the he started the levitation. The all was, mm -hmm. the all went wild because it started levitation. The body started levitating into the air, and all of a sudden, he pulled the cloth off, and she was not there. And the next thing, she was beside Baba Ulo. Right there. Yeah, right there. Ill and healthy. He's in the papers too. Even my mom had an interview last year, <laughs> with the the reporter referred to it. Yeah, so. After some time, yeah, he said um, he realized they, he had an interview and the reporter, like you said, that um, are you a member of any cult? My dad said no. I said, ah, so what he, which is a wizard, try you? He said, no, they cannot try me. We're not on the same realm. You know, I said someone took that up. So that was why I did to test him. And thank God my mom didn't lose her life. And it happened again in Ondo. My mom was levitating. It got to a stage. She couldn't go up and she couldn't come down. So I was on stage. I was the stage manager. So I, I, then I now realized what could be happening. So immediately, my dad went backstage. He meditated. After like 10 minutes, he came on stage and Mom was able to come down. And, and after the show, my dad just rushed to the entrance of the hall. And people were going, as people were going out, he just pulled one man in our bed and he dipped his hand into his pocket and he brought out a padlock. And my dad said, what did I do to you? Do you know me? And he just prostrated. I wanted to test. Power. Yes, that someone just, but, but you, just gave him. all these live experiences <laughs> that are glory, I mean, to praise magic. And you still want to go ahead and do magic? Oh, well, basically, I've got the training. Like you see, experience, they say, is the best teacher. I've been trained. I've experienced this with my dad. Was he? He was, he was not in it alone then. If I lost my mom, what would have happened? But we were in it together. I mean, we couldn't sleep. We were all crying over that. And it happened. So he told me what happened. So I knew. So now I'm, I'm ready for that. Yeah, I can guide against that. And uh, that's why I said, you, you must be good. You must get training in meditation and um, concentration. Uh, perhaps maybe other things that you're not telling us. Uh, well, there are no other things like I tell, like I'm telling you, there is no voodoo in magic. Magic is what you can learn. If you Google it, I mean, you'll see training schools for magic.